New club, new season, new challenge, and this one is a big one. We have taken over a club that is in a mess. If there's ever a season when we're going to get sacked in this journey, man, this could well be it. So let's try and bring you up to speed with everything that's been going on in what has undoubtedly been our busiest summer yet. We'll start in Poland, where Gornik were keen to keep us and they made us a good offer. The best part of £1,000 a week, the wage budget was good, the transfer budget was good, and the players had just been breaking all kinds of records, with Peter Jurica getting the highest average rating the division had seen, as well as breaking their top goal-scoring record. Even Selma Hayek was getting in on the act, with the most assists that this division had ever witnessed, even yours truly, was picking up their fifth Manager of the Month award. Most of the team of the year in the Polish second division was made up of our players, but we'd already started casting our net looking for our new employers. And unlike previous summers, the job offers started to come. Alas, not with the Real Madrid job. We did apply. Bizarrely, they did see us as an acceptable fit for their ambitious vision for the future. Goodness knows what's been going on at the Bernabeu, but we were out of luck with that job. But it wasn't long before we got our first offer, and it came from Romania, and it was with a top-flight club. UTA Arad offered us the position, although the wage was only £725 a week, but the wage budget, as well as the transfer budget, were decent. But we decided to delay this job offer and just see what else came our way because we had plenty of irons in the fire, including interviews that we just had at a couple of clubs in Turkey. And they did come a-calling. They were both second-tier Turkish clubs. But Samson Spore were offering us a £2,000 a week wage as well as a transfer budget of £6 million. Granted, we're not making any transfers in this series, but a wage budget of £110,000 and they weren't the only club from the Turkish second tier that were interested. Those old Yorkshire favourites, Eup Spore, also wanted to hire us. They'd have given us £2,100 a week and a wage budget of £8 million. They were tempting offers. And then there was a spanner in the works. We weren't looking for jobs in Poland, but one of the top clubs from that country actually approached us. The Lekia Gdansk board asked us if we would like to attend an interview. They are one of the biggest clubs in the country. They're a three-star reputation team and they were a club that had narrowly missed out on European qualification last season and they were a club who probably we could have had a little bit of a title tilt with. But I wasn't keen on a second season running in Poland. Maybe we might return there in the future but I wanted to see what other jobs would come our way and then... One came up that I thought would be another resuscitation of a fallen giant. And this one was too big a club to turn down. The next stop on our European tour is Austria. And to Ultravox's favourite city, Vienna. Where we've managed to get a job coaching Austria Wien. One of the biggest and most successful clubs in Austria. Hosting no fewer than 24 Bundesliga titles and even a European final appearance. Now along with rivals Rapid, Austria Wien have never been relegated from the top flight. That was, of course, until the 2024-25 season when the club finally slumped to the bottom of the league and are now requiring a mammoth rebuild. Given their lack of senior pros, this rebuild will be focused on youth. Worryingly, the two previous incumbents each lasted less than a year in the job. So who's the logical candidate to take over next? You guessed it. And so here we are safely installed as the new boss of Austrian Wien. The money would have been slightly better in Turkey. And I know people will be screaming as a mercenary we should have taken it. But we're on £1,600 a week. Not far off what the Turkish clubs like Samson Spore and Eup Spore were offering us. But this was just too big a club to turn down. To have Austria Wien on your CV is going to be a good little tonic for us. I think by the time we end our time in Austria, we could be a three-star reputation coach, and I think the job offers that we could apply for next summer could be big ones. We still got turned down for a few jobs, which was a little bit irksome. Those second-tier clubs in France and Italy were still absolutely not interested in entertaining the opportunity to even interview us, but I think next summer we could be in with a good chance of getting a top 
tier team but our attention for the next 12 months is at Austria Wien we've had to over promise them a little bit I think compared to what the media are predicting the media think we might finish fifth the board have told us they want nothing short of a top three finish it's going to be a push because the club financially has fallen on quite hard times and the squad has been ravaged. There are very few senior pros left at the club. Even the youngsters that are at the club have been attracting an awful lot of transfer interest during the summer. Not many of these players were keen to stick around following the club's first ever relegation to the second tier. So it has been really difficult to cobble together a squad. We've had to raid the youth ranks and we've come up with a tactic that hopefully will give us a chance at promotion. Although. This is possibly our most bizarre tactic yet. Let's introduce you to the players that are going to be playing this rather attacking, a little bit wonky and probably defensively quite vulnerable formation, starting with our goalkeepers, where we had some good options. We sold our third choice keeper in order to try and balance the books a little bit. But I would have been happy to start with him in goal, if I was honest. Certainly. If we had to play our backup keeper, Sandali Conde, I would not be too disappointed. He looks pretty good. The only thing that's keeping him out of the first team is an agility of seven. So instead, we're going to start with Kate Bush's choice for our starting goalie. And that is Dennis Vavusta, 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 ya, ya. And look how good he is, by the way. He's got much better agility. He's two-footed. He probably could be a sweeper keeper. I think I'm going to play him as just a regular goalkeeper on defend. He's only 27. He's wanted by some clubs. Lots of offers have come in for him as well as many of our other players. We're glad that we're keeping him. He's going to be our first choice for the season. But then going forward, things get a little bit more tricky. We don't have as many options for defenders, particularly in central defence. We've got a captain and a veteran who I think is going to be pretty decent for us. He was actually on the transfer list when we arrived and there was a transfer offer for him to go out that we cancelled on essentially our second or third day with the club. This is Marcus Fostry, who is 33 years old. He's another two-footed player. He's got pretty decent physicals for a veteran and I think he's going to be an important player for us, a bit of a leader at the back. And he's going to be playing alongside, essentially... Our only other decent choice in central defence. This is Felix Strauss. He's another good young player. At 24, he's probably one of our more experienced players, as you'll see as we move up the pitch. Determination of four and anticipation of eight. I'm not buzzing about. Marking of eight is not great either, but his positioning is pretty good. He's probably better playing just in front of the back four, but needs must, I'm afraid. Because we do have better options as we move into midfield. Such as the very talented Vedat Yilmaz. Only 17 years old, but a great personality. Really good physical. Six foot four. Going to play as a half back just in front of the back two. We've got decent marking. We've got great tackling. I think young Yilmaz could be a talent. But I think we've got more decent players further forward. Where we were really stuck is on the right-hand side, which is why we're playing a formation that's only got one player on the right. Pretty much the only player that we've got that can play out there is another veteran, Torsten Schick, who can play all over the park and all up the right-hand side of the pitch. The legs are going a little bit for 35-year-old Torsten, but otherwise, he's a really good player. Unfortunately, He's picked up an injury, and so our only real right-sided player is out of action today. Instead, we're going to deputise with a 19-year-old Bosnian, essentially a midfielder. Over on the left, I think we've got a better option, although it's a right-footed option playing at left-back in the form of Thomas Koffler. I think it would be a pretty good right-wing back, but can't play in that position at all. And with an advanced playmaker further ahead of him, I don't really want him to be an inverted wing back either. So his left foot is reasonably good. Hopefully Thomas Koffler can raid forward. And even if he has to check back onto his right foot and swing in crosses for our strikers, 
that might be a better weapon than any other of the youngsters that we have that could play in that defensive position. If we move into our midfield too, again, we've got some young talent. We've got Bertie Heinrich, who I would like to be one of our starting two midfielders for us. Again, physically great, only 18 years old. I think as a ball-winning midfielder or as a tough tackling box-to-box -box midfielder, Bertie could be good, but he's another player that's picked up an injury during pre-season. So instead, we're going to have to play Babs. This is Baba Armour. Again, perhaps not as strong as Bertie, really, but only 18 years old. Physically not as good. But again, the tackling, not bad. The positioning, the marking, not bad. I think a season of first-team football, and Babs could be a decent player. But we needed something that was going to be a little bit more attacking in midfield. We didn't have a lot. So we're going to play one of our strikers there. This is the Hungarian Saba Mester. Only 22 years old. Really wants to be a front runner. But finishing of eight and composure of nine means that I'm not adverse to bringing Saba back into the midfield. We're going to play him as a Mazala because I've made a little bit of a decision with our time at Austria V. And I'm thinking that some of the success we've had is because we have got so much out of two different positions on the pitch. Playing in the centre of midfield, a central midfielder on attack has been hugely profitable for us at a couple of our clubs. And also playing an inside forward over on the wing has been incredibly prosperous for us as well. So in order to try and make this challenge even tougher, as if taking over a recently relegated side wasn't tough enough, I've decided that for our time at Austria Wien, we're not going to play a central midfielder on attack or an inside forward either. And we're going to see whether we can still make it work. So Mester is going to be playing as a Mazala for us in this system. And hopefully it won't cost us too much. Now, to our star of the show. Brace yourselves, people, because I'm convinced this is the best player we've had under our tutelage so far. Here is Uwe Forstenhofer who I think is an absolute find. He's valued at anything up to £11.5 million, and he's only 17 years old physically. He's great mentally. He's brilliant. Imagine having a creative player with teamwork of 17 and work rate of 14, but look at what he can do on the ball. The passing is 16. The vision is 15. The off-the-ball movement is 15 as well. The flair could do with a little bit of development, but this is going to be the player that's going to pull all the strings for us. He's not 18 until September. He's already played three times for the Austrian under-21 team. Uwe, I think, is going to be the key for us. The bookmakers have got him as the potential top scorer in this division. I'm not sure about that, but I do think that he could be an electric presence for us out there. He wasn't really working in the number 10 slot, although that is something we could revisit. So today, we're just going to let him float around and be an advanced playmaker beginning out on the left. Maybe slightly Grealish-esque. We'll see how he gets on. But he's going to have to supply the bullets for our two-pronged strike force. Starting with Eurovision's biggest fan, this is Murahem Huskovic. He's pretty quick. His finishing is a little bit ropey, but he's been all right in pre-season. He's banged in five goals. I think he could be a good player, although he is a little bit want away. There's lots of clubs that are interested in him, and he is batting his eyelids at a lot of those clubs every time the offers come in. He's not thrown his toys out the pram yet, but I fear that might not be a million miles away. With him up front... We're going to be playing Cristiano Ivkic. Again, another pretty pacey option. A better finisher this time, although you wouldn't know it from his pre-season form. He is very young. He's only 21 himself. Between the two of them, I think they're going to be a pretty decent strike force. And they do have backup in the form of Enis Fidani. Again, great acceleration. The best finisher and the best composure out of the three. You never know, the Macedonian could be involved this season. We've got a whole bench made up of some very, very young and tender talents. We're going to have to develop a lot of players if we're going to get ourselves promoted this season. It would be great to start with a win. I fear this could be the club 
that we could be the most sackable of the jobs that we've taken so far. We're vulnerable, not playing a central midfielder on attack and an inside forward is only going to make things harder. But that is how we like it. Let's see how we get on in our opening game of the season. And let's give you the scout report on our opponents. We kick off life with Austria Wien by welcoming Lafnitz, last season's 12th place finishers, who are widely tipped for a better campaign this season. Gerno Plasnager's side will be looking to make a winning start on the opening day of the season as FK Austria Wien take on Lafnitz. So whenever we're at home this season, we are going to be in our violet shirts. This could be the trickiest of the jobs we've taken on so far. The club's in a little bit of a mess financially and in terms of the, the hierarchy of the club as well. A lot of the players are incredibly disappointed about the relegation. They think that they would want to move on to pastures new. We've tried to keep the players, especially the older players, with the club because there was not a lot left. The club held a bit of a fire sale before we had arrived and a lot of their senior players had retired, left on freeze, or already had transfers arranged out of the club. So we've really had to cobble something together. We've got a lot of youngsters in the team. Huskovic is one of them. We are going to be relying on his goals. What's going to make this team even more difficult to guide to glory is that down the right-hand side of the team, we've got virtually nothing. We've got an injury-prone 35-year-old. Otherwise. We don't have an awful lot that we can play. We don't have any attacking flair down the right-hand side at all. If it comes to it, we could retrain one of our strikers potentially to play out there. But as it starts, we're going to go with this rather lopsided asymmetric formation and see if we can get the best out of young Forstenhofer and see if he can basically carry us to promotion out of this division we're only the fifth favorites even though the board want the top three so i'm not anticipating great things from this club we've made a reasonable start against lafnitz though i have to admit but whether we were going to be able to guide this club to what our, our third promotion so far in this mercenary adventure i'm not convinced to be honest i think this has the feeling of a job that could go wrong. We're not up against the greatest of opponents for our first game today. So I'm hopeful we might be able to start with a win, particularly because this is a home game. But I think this could be a long and ultimately challenging season for us. We are five minutes from half time, and here is Babs Armar in the midfield. He spread the ball out. First and Hoffer is almost oh, popping up over on the right wing now, even though he plays from the left. Perhaps he's got a little bit more creative license than I thought. There he is at his creative best, playing a terrible ball across the six-yard box to absolutely nobody whatsoever. He's young. I'm sure he will get better with time. We've slung another ball in. There is the most advanced of our central midfielders, the Hungarian Mester. He heads it wide of the goal. I think we've had enough efforts this game to be a goal up by now, and we're still not. Huskovic is... Deep inside their penalty area, pulls the ball back to Kovac, who's filling in at right back for us. And there's Mester, just get your shot away. He's gone past a man, and I think he's been tagged, you know. I think he's won us a penalty. I think he just got his heels clipped. It didn't look very clear, but here is Huskovic, already booked. But he's got us our first goal in our time at Austria Wien. That is a good start. If we can take a one goal lead into half time, and that helps navigate us towards an opening day victory. That would be a good start to this season. We've got some decent teams in this division that we're going to have to overcome. I think a strong start would be incredibly useful for us. 15 shots, 4 on target, an XG of 1.76. We're going to give the boys that team talk about needing a second goal to take control of the game. Hopefully they can deliver. So things are going well, but we think they're capable of even better. That old trusty team talk, they responded pretty well to it, considering we've only been with this club for two or so weeks. Let's see whether we can get a more dominant performance in the second half and finish off some more of these chances. Some of the big teams that could be challenging for the title this season include 
a club called Altac, another club that we applied for a job with. They went elsewhere. They are the favourites for promotion this season. I think they're also a recently relegated club. So they are the ones that are expected to run away with this league this season. As we hit the bar, I don't think that's the first time we've hit the woodwork today. We are looking pretty dominant now. But we don't really look like we're finishing our chances, which could be a little bit of a worry. I'm not entirely sure whether we have a top marksman in this team. Although Huskovic has just got on the end of a chance to potentially grab his second. I think the referee's having a look at it. He has indeed ruled it out. Although maybe Huskovic could be the man that is going to fire us the goals we need. He was only marginally offside there. He certainly looked better in pre-season than Ivkic did. Maybe he could be our leading man for us. I think on 60 minutes it could be time to get some fresh legs on the pitch, maybe even up front, where I think we might experiment with one of our other striking options. OK, we went for a double change in the end as the clock races on. We took off Babs in midfield. We've also taken off the Macedonian up front. It's led to the game really going a little bit quiet. We've got more tired legs out there. I think we'll make another change in midfield. Maybe Saba Mester can come off. And let's bring... I think we'll save Bertie for another day, although I think Bertie could be a key player for us. Instead, we'll go for Michael Hutter as our final change. You know what? We're just a couple of minutes left. I'm quite happy to see this out as a narrow one-goal victory, even though I think we should have done better. Altac are picking up a 7-0 win on the first day of their campaign. So they are clearly going to be the team to beat this season. I think we've had enough chances for more goals, but we haven't really taken them. Here is Uwe. Again, I've not seen much from him. He is averaging a seven, but I don't think he's been overly involved this game. Maybe at 17, he might just need a little bit of time to settle in. Here he is. He's fed the ball into another 17-year-old and has now given it to Becker, the substitute that came on. He's had a long-range effort. The keeper has tipped it over. Uwe's taken all of our set pieces for us as well. It's another attempt on target as well. That is our 22nd effort of the game. And we have just one goal to show for it. There's still some work to do with the formation and the tactic. But our job now is to go away and get some games under our belt to see what kind of season we're shaping up to have by the time you come back and join us for our next episode of FM22 Mercenary.